How's everybody doing? Come on, how's everybody doing? I, I love that, that that second time you ask, it just puts it over the top. It's really good. Uh, so, uh, you guys been enjoying your time at Nerd HQ thus far this weekend? Very good. Have you been to other panels other than this one at Nerd HQ? Very good. I see a lot of nerd uh, gear out there. Thank you so much for supporting us at the Nerd Machine. It really means a lot to us. Uh, I'm going to cut... Oh, uh, uh, is there flash photography allowed of the panel? No. Is there video allowed of the panel? No. There's lots of kick-ass fun allowed of the panel. Yeah. <laughs> you, there was some stank on that one. Yeah. Uh, because um, there are a million and a half people on this panel, uh, I'm just going to start bringing them out as soon as possible. Sound good to you guys? You ready for a thrilling adventure hour panel? So without further ado, and in no particular, but this particular order, please welcome to the stage, Ben Blacker, Ben Acker, Mark Evan Jackson, <laughs> how lovely, ah, oh, yes, yes, Mark Cagliotti, Craig Kukowski, Janet Barney, Jason Ritter, Molly Quinn, Holland Storm, and Andy Bailey. There are so many of you. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you didn't introduce Piper. So oh, and Piper. Sorry. I didn't know we were allowed to bring our animals. <laughs> Molly, you were already going to be the cutest person here anyway. Well, here's the thing. You didn't have to hey, hey. Nathan and Alan had such a good panel, and the, I had my dog here because I couldn't leave her at the hotel. And I was like, okay, I got to do something. Like, I got to step it up. So I grabbed her. You know, always good to have a backup plan. How much are we bid? <laughs> is it a purebred? <laughs> it is a purebred, and I, I would like my, my money back, so we could start it at a uh, reasonable ten dollars. You paid ten dollars for that for dog. She's a good size. If we take it from you, is it considered rescuing it? <laughs> I heard that's very popular. <laughs> yes, we can say that. Uh, does anybody have uh, a question burning a hole in their pocket? Yes, right down here on the right. Down on the All right. All the questions are going to be for Piper. <laughs> Who's a good girl? <laughs> Another mic. Mic him. Mic him. Get him a mic. Get him a megaphone. <laughs> are you a vampire? <laughs> oh, it's not working. <laughs> Vampires can't, be seen in is, or amplified. vampires can't be heard by mics. If the question is, uh, I'm thinking about getting into voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> what is step number one? Thank you for your question. <laughs> Next. That's all the time we have. <laughs> digging Piper, digging the boots, Molly, and my question is for you. Um, obviously, we've seen several growth in uh, your relationship, Alexis and Castle. Is there anything we can see that you'd personally like? that hasn't happened yet t for your character specifically. I'll take this one. Um... I mean, that is true. All Alexis' questions should be uh, actually given to Mark. Um, there is actually, and I do believe we'll be seeing it this season, uh, Alexis got kidnapped, if you guys remember that. And uh, things just kind of went back to normal. She didn't really suffer any aftermath or PTSD. She just kind of went back to it and uh, even got a boyfriend. It was a... It was a little quick for me. I mean, I have PTSD if I'm in a room that's too crowded or the grocery store isn't carrying the type of cookies that I like. So this year... So you year... come to Comic-Con? Is that... <laughs> well, no, this is... I have, I have, that's why I have my, my guard dog with me. I mean, I'm, I'm protected. Uh, so I would really like, and I'm fairly certain... Actually, I, I am certain. We will be seeing Alexis kind of uh, go through her prolonged PTSD with uh, her father's, her, her father's what? I mean, all we know is that a car is on fire and he's not around. So she'll be dealing with that. I'm very excited for you guys to see that. It's precisely what I was going to say. <laughs> Who's got the neck? Right. Uh, hello. Uh, questions actually for Paul and Storm. But yeah. Hey, yeah, didn't see that one coming, huh? Glad to see you guys out here. Uh, we've been following since Da Vinci's Notebook. Uh, just any chance for a Da Vinci's Notebook tour? <laughs> uh, Mark, you want to handle this? There you go. I wasn't listening, but yeah. Um, 
As soon as he said it's for Paul and Storm, we Gluten all... Gluten intolerance, I think, is the biggest issue facing... Uh, uh, Palestine? That's exactly what we were going to say, actually. No, I mean, never say never, but uh, there's nothing... There's no plans for it at the moment, but we're all still friends and such. Yeah, we still keep in touch. Uh, so, you know... No, no PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> Limited amounts. Um, but thank you for addressing the first two questions to guest actors of the Thrilling Adventure Hour. We're not taking any Thrilling Adventure Hour related questions today, so let's just make that clear. I have a question about Legend of Korra and Gravity Falls. I, was, I, I, I have I six follow-ups. I, I thought I got cut off. I think you, I think you did. <laughs> uh... Did, did you have a question about the Legend of Korra? No, I'm good. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, what I is guys... Legend of Korra? I heard you guys were canceled. I think we're taking answers from the audience, actually. Someone we're, Vince we're asking questions of the audience now. Uh, who's oh, yeah, there? wait. There, there are actually Thrilling Adventure fans here. I'm very excited. I see a Crouch doll right there. Ben and I were just whispering about this outfit. This is a deep cut. This is an adventure coteer from the original graphic novel. Uh, it's really <laughs> awesome. But the rest of you can absolutely direct your questions to Janet. <laughs> hey, all my buddies. Hi, all my buddies. Hey. Hi, all my Hi Crouch. Hi, all my buddies. Hello. Um, so I was wondering where the pause in I'm from Earth came from, if it was always there or if it evolved. Um, I'll take this one. <laughs> Mark Evan Jackson pauses between every word in the show. That's... So. True. Uh, it was, uh, I think because the Thrilling Adventure Hour, what Ben and Ben originally crafted, and obviously you've, I would guess that you've heard this story, that, the thrill, uh, that Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars began as a feature. But a couple of articles recently have referred to the show very accurately, I think, as both, like, homage and parody. Like, it's both. Like that, and I think that you guys have that. So I'm from Earth. It was clear from my very first reading of the script, like, they want this to be a hardcore catchphrase. And so it, uh, it was obvious to me in, um, immediately that it needed, you know, a little like, this is a moment. Uh, but I think the ellipsis of I'm ellipsis from Earth has been in there from day one, correct? Yeah, the idea was kind of always that the Sparks Nevada world and the story of Sparks Nevada had been an ongoing serial since like the 1920s. Uh, and so this was his catchphrase, and that Jackson gave it so much weight and importance. Uh, it was really cool. You guys don't get to see the scripts, but actually, now that we were guest actors, we get to see it. You don't realize there are nine ellipses between the I'm and From Earth every time they write it out. I also wonder, we know who Mark Evan Jackson is looking at when he says that it's the audience, but I wonder who Sparks Nevada is looking off to <laughs> on Mars going, I'm... And everybody around him is like, what is he looking at? It's... A mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a mirror is like a buddy of yours, or? <laughs> also, for us, dig a little deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amir to lie. Who's gonna play Amir? Amir to lie. If, if this panel has proven anything, it's that we really do need the Andy Paley Orchestra uh, to make a lot of <laughs> these lines work. Some of these gaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. This is going very poorly so far. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the next question? Who's got the next mic? Right over there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I don't think I need to say that you guys had an excellent show last night with Night Thank Vale. You. you can say it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was my first live show after listening to the podcast for a while. It was amazing. Anyways, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, Mark, Evan Jackson, please never stop doing the fan questions answered with Paul F. Tompkins. They are my favorite non-scripted thing in the entire podcast. Uh, Deal. <laughs> second of all, I just wanted to ask about the theme songs. Like, what, what was sort of the interaction? I know some of them were written by uh, Evan Schletter. Um, did you just kind of, just one? Just, oh. the, just the Sparks theme is written Ooh. by Evan. Just uh, the good one. And, just the Andy good one. wrote the rap. Uh, Hi, Andy. <laughs> oh, and the, the Beyond Belief was also Evan Schletter, right? The Nightmare Beyond Belief. Oh, no. Yeah. sung by one Hal Lublin. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, what was the process? Andy can speak to that. 
to writing what? The theme songs? Uh, was it was it input just from Ben and Ben uh, toward? Well, basically, uh, Ben Acker and Ben Blacker will say, okay, here's this uh, part of the script, uh, this thing we've written that needs a song. And it'll be, uh, you know, about a genie in a bottle who uh, comes out. Or a guy named uh, Yumbo, who's an elephant. Yumbo uh, is But it's spelled J-U-M-B-O. So the idea is to write a catchy song that people will remember that goes J-U-M-B-O. Yumbo. Or uh, what's another one? I think that pretty much explains yeah. it. That's, that's the process. That's the process. I want to then... speak to this, uh, and I mean it. Um, Andy Paley can't write a song that you don't hum for weeks. Like, four weeks forever. And he's, I'm not kidding. And so much so that uh, he's been doing it for decades. And Andy, is your album available? Is the Paley Brothers album available? Yes, my brother and I made a record in the 70s, which has recently been reissued, which Ben uh, and Ben have, and I think Mark has it. I have it, and I love it. It's, um, it's full of hits. It, full, it sounds like a, dis, uh, uh, a lost and uh, now discovered Beach Boys album. They're all hits. It's amazing, and uh, I encourage you to check it out. But yeah, every Thank single you. theme song is uh, just an earworm. Like, it gets in there, and you're like... <laughs> can't stop i i also have that album and i would not recommend buying it because you will it will permanently be in your brain the all of these songs on that album please don't but, buy but that you know album. what there is going to be a thrilling adventures album and everybody should grab that so just um you know we'll let you know when that's happening but it's happening soon is uh, the galactic trail going to be on? riding the galactic trail that's that a is good one. my favorite song i, I actually love that one too. moonshine yeah. holler yeah, another good one. That's my favorite. I had uh, almost all of these guys and a lot that aren't here actually sign the Galactic Trail, uh, you know, our, our lyric sheet. I have it hanging in my living room. It's awesome. I love that song so much. I go, I do go around. I go around singing it all the time. Riding the Galactic Trail. <laughs> but like I Love Lucy where I'm totally off key and all over the place. And we do a Christmas show with Christmas songs. And anyway, all that stuff's going to come out. Golf clap. Slow, slow build. Slow build. That's all right. I like slow build. You were all very unsure about that for a second. You know, I think we should. I think we should. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get back. Uh, who's next? Oh, right here. Hi, guys. Uh, this Hi. is a question for the Benz. Uh, I know they're very busy, but I just wanted to know. You can take a if, question. Um, no, I just wanted to know if there are any plans to bring back Cactoy Jim or the Red Plains Rider anytime soon. Next question. <laughs> I like Sparks more. I just also enjoy this question. <laughs> Let me answer your question with a question. Do you live in Los Angeles? Yes. Are you coming to the September show? Sure, of course. All right. The Red Plains Rider will be there. The Red Plains Rider. Uh, Nathan is a busy guy, and um, as you know, we would never replace him as Cactoid Jim. Uh, so it's really been about like lining up his schedule. Next question, right here. Hi guys, um, Hi. I was also at your show last night. It was basically the highlight of my con, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you very much. So my question is for everyone, but I was wondering, how did you mesh such, like they're very different shows. I was wondering, how did you get them together? Like, And Paul and Storm, your guys' uh, commercial, that was like my favorite part. <laughs> and it was so different from everything, anything I've ever seen. So I was just um, wondering how you guys did that, and uh, if there are any plans for another one, that would be cool. Everyone, your voice got really high just then. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's the dog. Yeah, I, I, I think it was really the night bill guy. 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 Night and then one guy sneezed in the front row. Yeah, and I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I have some and ideas. It was just one of the things that just happened. Which is when yeah, Cactoid yeah. Jim died. <laughs> Earth. So. I can't, I can't believe you didn't just break the sound system right now. Uh, who's got the next one? Right over here. Hi, guys. Hi. 
My Hello. question is for anyone on the panel. Please answer individually. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Thought we might need that. We've all seen or heard some really fabulous train wrecks. From saying other people's lines to blessing someone in the audience last night when they sneezed. <laughs> which was my favorite part of the show. Thank you? <laughs> Basically, I love it when you improvise. What is your favorite or most memorable improvisation, script train wreck thing that you did not plan to happen? Um, in Chicago, I um, went off before I... Is this on? Can you all hear me? Okay, good. Um, I went off stage before my cue, and I come back, and uh, Mark like, was like, oh, no, you're still on. And I didn't hear him. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, no, no, you're still on. And he like turned me around and like pushed me. <laughs> I did something similar in Seattle, too, where uh, all the music was going on, and I was supposed to leave because Pimley, you know, had, dis was disappearing. And I looked at everybody for a long time, and I was like, why are they all looking at me like that? And I like looked down my script, and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to go away now. <laughs> We, we put like six stage directions in an 80 page script. <laughs> and the number of times they get missed is unbelievable. <laughs> I, uh, last October, when we were in New York doing shows at the Bell House, <clears throat> we were doing, uh, it was the first of, of two shows, and uh, we were doing Beyond Belief. And normally, for Beyond Belief, all I have to do is come out at the beginning and go, it's time to send the little ones to Dreamland. And then. <laughs> Thank you. And then I come on at the end, do a pun that they've written, and, and wrap it up. But this one had an entrance in the middle. And so I was sitting backstage uh, talking with Ben Blacker, having a great conversation. And I heard from, from the monitor somebody going, hey, uh, episode 76, true believers. And it was Paget. Because I had missed the entrance. I didn't know it was in there, and neither of us knew. And the best part of that is, is knowing that, that Paget immediately panicked because she knew I was supposed to be there. And then was like, what do I do? What do I do? Is he going to come out? Should I wait for him to come out? No, I should do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Page 76, I did it. Um, so, yeah. I always watch the show. I do uh, Sparks, and then I go into the back of the house and watch the middle bit, whatever. I thought you went home. Uh, almost never. And, um, uh, and I watch uh, Beyond Belief in the middle bit or whatever. And when I was at the Bell House watching that show, uh, it was just confusing. Like, uh, there was this moment where it was like, well, what's meant to be happening here? I think Paget may, may have gone to a different mic to deliver the line. Gone to your mic for no reason. They're this, it doesn't make her sound like Hal. And she said the line, and I was in the back going like, what the hell is this? In her it, head, was, it was a line you could have skipped and no one ever would have right. known. Yeah. In her head, it must have sounded just like Hal. <laughs> I have my most terrifying moment um, is when, as Drunk Roach, I decided in the moment to smack Busy's ass. Uh, and the look that Busy gave me <laughs> as I was walking off stage, smack her ass and walk off stage, and the look she gave me, I just stood backstage going, she's going to kill me, she's going to kill me. <laughs> She came backstage and gave me a big hug after the scene. Yeah, that moment where Molly left the stage in Chicago, uh, like it was Hal and I left alone, and uh, I'm, I'm trained in improv. I should be able to handle these things that I usually do. For some reason, I was just so completely flabbergasted that she left that uh, all TikTok could muster was like, well, I, that was interesting. Yeah. And I, yeah, I was out there as Trey So, Hawk. what else yeah. is going on? So, both of us, as improvisers, and I was like, well, she just left. <laughs> no, yes, really Trey Clark, that's... Wow, so what's going on with you? I was thinking about getting lunch after this, Colonel. <laughs> but you're a clock, you don't eat, that's the thing. I like to look at the food. <laughs> Ding, new choice. <laughs> that would have been so much better than what actually happened. Next question. Oh, good heavens. You just lost um, cutest. How do you make your stories? <laughs> I've been wanting to ask that too. I just come up with them. Yeah. Can I rescue you? You're adorable. How do you come up with your stories? I, 
don't have stones. a sweet answer. No, I, uh, Ben and I sit down and kind of figure out what we want to make the actors do uh, in any given month. And, uh, you know, we like to, Sparks is especially fun because we can kind of move the story along and it gets to evolve incrementally. Uh, but we get to put him with n in new relationships and facing new foes and having new obstacles. Um, this is a terrible answer. I'll answer it. Yeah. <laughs> we type them. <laughs> These guys love to get super duper silly and think of crazy things to make all of us do. And they use their imaginations and they have fun and they're just super creative and they think of the craziest things they can have us do and they write them down and we have to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Hey, guys. Um, are there any plans? Uh, you, please. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. And I'll see you on Saturday. Could are you there... please stand up? <laughs> are there any plans for any new skits? First of all, skits. Skits. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not Cub Scouts. <laughs> Aren't we? Alice. Anymore. Uh, we're currently taking pitches from the cast. Is your mic work? Bane. Bane. Oh, Janet Hel Bane. Bane. Captain yeah. Um, Philip Fathom Captain is kind of new. We've been doing a lot of spinning off, uh, and there are like, there's so many characters in the Sparks universe that we want to spin off into their own things. We've talked about a few new ones, uh, but, you know, it's just, it's a monthly show, which is at once so often and really not that often. So like to debut something new, uh, we have to find the right spot for it. Maybe somebody yeah, just yeah. kind of follows Felton around his day. We, <laughs> we are just, 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 just kind of like Louie, just like very like low key. <laughs> <laughs> just very like mundane interactions. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else in the cast or guest cast have I a mean, pitch? I, oh, we, I pitched doing little uh, five minute Pimley episodes like after or before uh, the Sparks Nevada, like full episodes, like just, you know, like little, little tiny scenes. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. For the record, you pitched oh, 15 oh, minutes. Yeah. You pitched 15 We were all there when you did uh, you, that. Yesterday you said, you said 15 minutes. just real short 15, and we were like, that's an episode. <laughs> but, you know, like, like Pimley's and she's got like a dog dialogue. sidekick and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's it, that was my pitch. Yeah, her little, like, Pimley's internal dialogue. We'll get back to you. <laughs> She's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. Any questions for Jason Ritter? Well, I have a question for everyone, so you can answer as well. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so even though everything is scripted, I know there's a lot of improv, and many of you have done improv. I'm just wondering... Um, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Yes, Many sir. of us have improvised. <laughs> oh, I, actually, this is a great time to plug this. If you, uh, if you, do you enjoy doing improv? I am starting to do improv. I want everybody to, to remember this website, and if you're watching this on the internet, you can visit right now when, when this is played back. It's www.doingimprovwithmarkgagliardi.com. There's a video, an email address, and I may still have two buttons left. And this is the longest April Fool's Day prank of all time. I'm just surprised. because in a podcast I said that there, you don't need you the. You just phrase. said it now. I have to stop you. Well, that's what, what I said. Are my pet peeves? I said I said I don't like the phrase "do improv" because the word "improvise" is the same number of syllables. Uh, and Hal and Ken Plume Nerds. went insane and made a website and a thing. And now I look like a big jerk. But I'm starting to. Interrupt. I'm ready for your question. <laughs> And to clarify, I meant other things, not just on Thrilling Adventure. I'm oh, good. doing improv. I'm also very literal. But my question is... You're my favorite, uh, yes. second favorite, second favorite. <laughs> Thank you. My question is, when you start out doing, started out improvising, <laughs> what were some of the aspects of improvising that you found most difficult, or are there any that you still kind of struggle with but still push through? Jason? Oh, God. <laughs> You'll see how bad I am at it right this minute. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's terrifying. I, don't, I haven't really uh, done a lot of improvising, to be honest. Uh, I had a 
class in high school, and it was fun and terrifying. I guess the thing that's the hardest part of it um, for me is this, like, wall of terror comes up that's like, be funny, think of something, think of something to do. And, and the, the key is to get to a point where you trust your brain enough to be like in the moment with whoever else and just sort of ride the wave of the scene and trust that you're, you've trained your mind to come up with funny things as opposed to trying to like, be like, no, I don't say that. Come on, I want, there's something over here that I really want to do that's funny. So that was the biggest challenge for me. Thanks, I answered the question. <laughs> I teach improv for a living, it's very lucrative. And, um, <laughs> but uh, early on when you start improvising, it's, uh, it's just fear and self-judgment. Uh, and you're, you're trying to give the right answer or the funniest answer or the best answer. And you just have to give the answer that is true to you. One thing I tell my students, and I think a Comic-Con crowd will respond well to this, is that I'm like Professor X and all of you are mutants. You already have your power. Yes. I'm not giving you any powers you don't possess already. What I'm helping you to do is channel and focus your powers that you already possess. So like Cyclops has the eye shield that prevents him from just shooting people with his eye lasers. And so, yeah, young improvisers are dangerous and not in control of their, their powers yet. And you just got to get them to calm down and focus and realize that everybody's going to kind of reinvent the art form in their own image. Rather than emulating somebody else, you just got to carve away at what is already there. Hi. Uh, Don't, it's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Does everybody want to do it? Get on the line. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it's... A trap. <laughs> They're not having it. They are not impressed right here. <laughs> this is not having it. This is just a sneaky way to actually introduce the uh, Thrilling Adventure Star Wars crossover <laughs> happening next February. Um, uh, real fast, Mark, can you do a... That's not how you pronounce that, a la croach. That's not how you say it. You, mi you misdesignate me. <laughs> you uh, butcher my language with your single tongue. Um, Croach. Say it with me. Croach. Croach. Incorrect. Um, so one of my favorite moments from the show is when everybody did their Mark Evan Jackson impression. Um, uh, what, other than your own characters, like who would you like to like just jump in and like t like obviously Paget can't do Hal, but uh, like... not without his mic. <laughs> uh, is there any is there any character you'd love a chance to just like you know? Venusian spy or like be like guest as somebody else's character. I'd love to play Jib Janine. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. We got to do that. At, at, I think at the this past Christmas episode was the it was Christmas on Jupiter, and at the end we all came out as Jupiter. Spoiler. Spy. Yeah. You'll, you'll hear it in December. You'll hear it in several months. Don't worry. Not that bad of a spoiler. But uh, that would be a really fun one to to do. Not only because the voice is, is fun and weird, but uh, to try and bring an energy that's in the neighborhood of Paul's yeah. because he's so unique and his mind is brilliant. So to just sort of figure out how, what would my take on that be would be cool. I would love to just be able to do that um, Sadie voice that Patrick does. <laughs> I don't know it. where that comes from. It's like Glinda the Good Witch and <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. But Will I you try it, Jason? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I always thought it would be fun. I, Clark Gregg nailed it. Scott Adsit nailed it. Uh, I think it would be fun to try the transition from human into Robbie the Roughhouser. I think that'd be a fun game to play. Yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind being Nightmares the Clown. I love that character. <laughs> for Banny, I can't make it sometime. Uh, Philip Fathom, for sure. That's a, that's a killer voice, uh, which it might kill me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's a really fun game, and I think my favorite was the um, the Christmas poem, the uh, the verse one, which was really fun. Yeah. We did a Christmas show a couple years ago where Zach, you did a, a Joker essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. That's uh, the Joker to my Batman right there. Yeah. 
And I would Batman. Like to do that. That's what it reminds me of. Batman. Yeah. That's it's like what Batman. Oh, okay, okay. But I, I finally I got there. To, I would love to do that character. Like, that was so much fun. I was so jealous watching you up there and doing those crazy rhymes and that voice. I was like, oh, man, I want to do that. Thanks, Molly. <laughs> I'd like to do Donna Henderson. There is something about... I don't know. She speaks to me, you know what I mean? Uh, this is the question that makes us all paranoid of each other now, by the way. <laughs> like, we're all like... You're trying to take my gig. Hi, uh, guys. We, uh, another thank you for last night's show. The uh, crossover was fabulous. Um, it got me to thinking, and this originally was for the Benz, but since cast members are now pitching uh, ideas, uh, I was thinking, what, what about doing crossovers between the serials that you do? It would be interesting to see Philip Fathom on the Martian desert or see how Frank and Sadie Doyle would deal with Croach the Tracker. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we can't. We contractually cannot. We can't. Paget has things. It's... Yeah, yeah. We signed a lot of paperwork on Paget and Paul that can't cross over to any other pieces. What about if you didn't include uh, Beyond Belief? What would be oh. the point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do have okay. a pitch now that I think about it. Um, we did it at the town hall show in New York, and we haven't done it in a very long time. When we used to do this show years ago at M Bar in Hollywood, uh, there would be these little modules, these little segments, uh, like 15 minutes. Uh, um, but no, very brief. In fact, uh, I did One Minute Mysteries, uh, which was a very, I don't think any of those have ever been podcast, have they? The One Minute Mystery did. Did it? The one we just did? Very early on. Okay. Yeah. Um, you guys know it? How about the, uh, okay. Do it. Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Um, this has turned into the one-minute mystery of whether you can remember the one-minute mystery. A boy, a boy and his father get in a car accident. Uh, the father is killed, and the boy is rushed to surgery. When oh, the, the surg mom's the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you just fell into a classic blunder. It's Upon a seeing the boy, the surgeon says, I can't operate on this boy. He's my son, but like I said a second ago... Women can be doctors, the, Mark. The dad died. We're getting some interference. <laughs> Sounds like maybe a police scanner. Uh, so how could that be possible? We'll be back with the answer to this one-minute mystery in just a moment. We now return you to One Minute Mysteries with Mark Evan Jackson. It's the mom. So remember... <laughs> to recap... The surgeon says, I can't operate on this boy. He's my son, but the father died. How is this possible? Mom. Well, it turns out... It's mom. ...that surgeon was mistaken. This has been a one-minute mystery with Mark Evan Jackson. <laughs> Women doctors. Get a smaller dog. Hey, if I could, I would. It's practically a cat. Don't listen to him, by the way. She's gonna kill me. She is... Uh, we have fun. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is our... Oh, what? I just want to say really quick, before we finish... Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to Zach Levi Who? and Amen. to Kaina and everyone who worked so hard to get Nerd HQ here. They, they just busted themselves. And to everyone here who donated and helped make this a reality. And thank you so much and thank you so much for coming. You guys are just incredible. And it's a lot of work and it's appreciated. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you guys so much. Let's hear it for the cast of something Adventure Hour, please. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going for these guys.
Oh, now you're awkwardly oh, yeah. still on the stage. Devin Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it one more time for these guys.